It's week three, and we have an absolutely jam-packed show. We're talking, we're, we're never not working, we're got starts of the week, we've got Boom Boom Kicker that is uh, probably the best thing you've ever heard in your life, all sorts of things, including a water bed on today's episode. So make sure you like this video, subscribe, click the bell so you get notified when we're going live or doing special events Sunday mornings. You're going to want to check that out because weather is going to become more of a factor. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing here. We really appreciate you watching. Enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Jason Moore is here. I am. I am happy to be here, Andy. Back with the snapback. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a long, rough morning this morning. So uh, this is a cover. <laughs> the morning co- was in the morning. The it was a long one though. Gotcha. And a uh, rough one. And so the the hat covers the hair, which wasn't an option before for right. bad mornings. No, it wasn't. Also, Jay Grizz is in the house, <laughs> and he has not got to witness young, cool, hip Jason. So no. now it's like, you know, I'm trying it on around a bear. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, no mic today. So Jay Grizz stepping in. A massive show. Yeah, there is. a Let's, let's go. Yeah, we've got Never Not Working on the show. We've got a lot of news, and people need injury updates on certain players this week. We have a game tonight. Matchups to get through. Starts of the week. Boom, boom. This is a show. You didn't expand the boom boom to more stanzas because we do not have time for that. No, I, I, well, originally it was a book this week. Right. And then I cut it down to a song, but uh-huh. then with all, everything that worked in, I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep it as it's been. Smart. Yeah. Smart. Um, FootClanGiveaway.com giving away a Jalen Waddle, Jalen Hurts, and DJ Moore autographed jersey as well as a video tour of the studio, a personal tour. We'll hop on Zoom with you. Um, you know, walk you, introduce you to Jay Grizz, things like that. Yeah. And uh, the community's over at jointhefoot.com. Lots of folks over there. Lots of tools that are starting to take form with data from the 2022 season, the stream finder, the snapshot tools. Uh, you want to avail yourself of those. You can find them on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's get into it. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Never Not Working today on the show, digging into some numbers, trying to find some insights that benefit the Foot Clan as we head into week three of the fantasy season. Last week, we looked at quarterbacks, we looked at garbage time, And that kind of age-old narrative that it's desirable, right, for the quarterback position. Um, The TLDR of what happened last week was that quarterbacks who lost in close games more than doubled the QB1 hit rate of garbage time losers, okay? So even though there are those cases where the massive blowout benefits the garbage time quarterback, Don't bank on that narrative. Yeah, I think while we were putting all this data together behind the scenes, Kyle had a really good description because it's kind of surprising when you say, well, doesn't the team pass more when they're down? Yes, that's true. The pass rate skyrockets, but they don't have the ball that much. The other team is running the clock out, so the opportunity goes down. Yeah, the possessions per quarter and and opportunity to actually – you know, go out there and make a play. And and we've all been there where you're watching those games and you're like, oh, finally they got it. Now they're just going to be passing. And then, boy, if you get a three and out right there, it's like mm-hmm. seven minutes is off the clock before you see them with the ball again. But this week we're going to look at the running back and wide receiver position. 
Obviously, you do not start just one running back, one wide receiver. Uh, there are multiples for each fantasy team and varying tiers of startable fantasy players for each position. So we're pulling a lot of data that comes out of a great article by our writer, Matt DeSorbo. Uh, he wrote a Flip the Game Script article. You can check it out on the site. But he tracked every single spread of every game over the last 20 years. So I'm going to give you some data, and then we're going to look at some situations for this week as we look at running backs and wide receivers. First of all, favored teams in general, when you look at those game lines, they win the game 66% of the time over the last 20 years. And what Jason said earlier is 100% true. The game script effect, it gets increasingly potent. Teams that are in the lead, they run more, and the more in their lead, they, the more in the lead they are, they run. And then teams trailing past the ball more. However, very interesting outcome here for the running back and the wide receiver position. If the game is projected to be close, so the spread is two and a half points in either direction, fantasy players, they score pretty much the same, whether they're the favorite or the underdog. So a close matchup, that's how it ends up. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. As the spread widens, the favorite becomes a heavier favorite. Here's what we see at the running back position. Favored running backs average 27 more rushing yards than underdog running backs. Favored wide receivers average 42 more receiving yards than underdog wide receivers. And that feels like the one that is a little surprising just because of what we talked about, like, oh, you're going to be passing the ball more, you're going to be down. But the favored wide receivers, look, they're favored because they're better and they're going to score a lot of points and uh, have a lot of yards there you do have to accomplish a lead right. somehow right yeah. and we see that players from all positions they score more when they're on the side of the favorites uh, a long time ago when I was just starting at fantasy and I remember struggling in my first year my second year philosophy was legitimately who's going to win a ton of football games this year and then I'm taking running backs from those teams mm-hmm because they're going to be in a position that is more trustworthy, more predictable. It's not that – because that's what we're talking about is predictability. Can you predict the outcome? Is this going to be close? Is it going to be a big blowout? Favored teams, they win 66% of the time, and favored teams score more fantasy points at running back and wide receiver. That's the data over the last 20 years. So basically, picking players on the side of the favorites, it's more important than trying to play the game script narrative and saying, well, maybe in garbage time – Antonio Gibson will catch six passes, you know, because there'll be check downs. It's too unpredictable to lean on that narrative. So how does this impact your decision making in fantasy? Well, this could be a tiebreaker for you when you're looking at a couple of options. Uh, Kyle, what was the example you brought up earlier this morning? It was Kareem Hunt tonight. Or the Jaguars this week as well. With with James Robinson or Travis Etienne, right? Right, against the Chargers. So, Jags are heavy underdogs. What's the line in that Seven game? Seven points was the line this morning. And then on the other side, what, four and a half for the Browns tonight? Is that where it's still at? That's where it's at. Yeah, so when you're deciding, maybe you're deciding Kareem Hunt, James Robinson, and that might be a decision maker for you. We all know the Chargers defense very good. Um. The narrative for Jacksonville last week, why James Robinson had a monster week with tons of opportunities, they were just bamboozling the Colts. So that could be a decision-making situation. Some other favored running backs this week, Miles Sanders at Washington. That was Mike's start of the week this week, so it uh, fits this narrative very well. Um, Kareem Hunt against Pittsburgh. We talked about it. Devin Singletary against Miami. They're always going to be favored, and he's a special case because they don't – they don't like that running thing over there in Buffalo. Not when they have a big, big lead, which is, seems like the opposite. It just when when Buffalo gets a giant lead, they have other running backs that could come in and basically mop up. James mm -hmm. Cook last week played the whole third and fourth quarter. Yeah, it, it, James Cook and Isaiah Pacheco are doing real good work in the fourth quarter when their team when the other team has gone home. That being said, heavy favorites more often than not they're going to have opportunities early in the game. Favorite wideouts this week, Devontae Smith. Not my start of the week. Was very close to my start of the week. Nice. Uh, Amari Cooper against Pittsburgh tonight. Juju. Uh, there are some underdog wide receivers with a five-plus point spread like Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, and Jahan Dotson against Philly. 
I think all three of those guys are very scary this week against that Philadelphia defense. Um, I think the normal narrative would be, hey, Philly gets up and those guys – Mm -hmm. have the opportunity to how that work for Minnesota. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, it, it didn't work well. And then underdog wide receivers, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore against Cincinnati as well. Um, so just bear all of this information, this data in mind when you are making your decisions. Uh, it's, it's fun to get into the numbers and kind of figure out what is predictable. Cause that's all we're doing. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. I think yesterday on the show, everyone kind of chuckled when you asked, you know, Kyle Pitts or uh, was it Fryermuth the rest of the season? Right. And it was like, my answer was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But like, that's the honest truth. You're just trying to find predictability, percentages, play the odds. Every week when you're making your starts for your whole roster, you're trying to just set up yourself with a situation for, for winning. Yeah, you just want more data to be right more often than you're wrong in the grand scheme of things. And this really applies well to DFS where you can pick all out of every player, you know what I mean? Uh, when when you're looking at your lineup, it's a good tiebreaker between two flex options. You know, go look at the lines and, and, and see if one is favored, one is an underdog. But when you're building a, an entire roster from the ground up out of all players on a weekly basis, you should be familiar with the, uh, the spreads. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo to see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jason, are you prepared to um, to blitz this news? Because we got a lot of it. I am prepared. Jump in if you think additional commentary is necessary. All right? Got it. In between kick flips or whatever else you're doing over there with your, <laughs> yeah, right. with your backwards hat. Uh Justin Herbert participated in stretching and in drills on Wednesday in the portion of the practice that was open to the media. There was a report on NFL Network that he was throwing the day before. Um, Additional information. The Vegas line still has the Chargers favored by seven. Vegas doesn't do that if they are unsure who's ooh, playing quarterback. Excellent. Keenan Allen participated in individual drills. Said he has a shot to play Sunday against Jacksonville. Don't ever listen to Keenan Allen. He will personally <laughs> leave you wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Lamar Brooks literally said I don't like him saying that. Lamar Jackson, limited participant in practice due to a right elbow injury. He's fine. Gabe Davis, returned to a limited practice on Wednesday. Dawson Knox held out with a foot injury. You think we get Gabe Davis back? Eventually. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean this week. Let's, I, let's, let's, yeah, let's he, he was him. really close to playing last week, so I would imagine a week later he'll play. Alvin Kamara returned to a limited practice on Wednesday. I think he'll play. Michael Pittman returned to a limited practice on Wednesday. Very confident he plays. Some cardinal injuries. Rondell Moore still sidelined. James Conner didn't practice with the ankle. I wouldn't have expected him to, but keep an eye on uh, the next two practice reports. Wednesday is a tough day if they're dealing with anything. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Wednesday practice reports are almost meaningless because half of the time players are given that off as just a day of rest, but in order to give them that day off, they have to go on the injury report when there's nothing. So if, an, if a player is actually working through an issue like J James Conner, I would never expect him to play on Wednesday. Now, here's one, on. here's one we had more information on. Jacoby Myers did not practice due to a knee injury and underwent Wednesday getting tests on the knee. Tests showed nothing significant, but he is dealing with something. That's unfortunate. Just picked him up. I know. you. you only four bucks, right? Yeah, it wasn't right. too bad. Jerry Judy didn't practice. KJ Hamler did return to practice. Could be back. George Kittle was limited in practice with his... Ah! That, I'm just no, I'm just leaving it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, groin injury. Yeah, that's that's sad. He plays on Sunday nights. You have to have a backup plan, and the backup plan will probably be your plan. Bellinger Monday I, night. I How think, about that? Okay. He scored last week. He looked really good to me. Eh, I would rather start a different tight end. Like if, if oh, not me. You're you're saying you would rather wait? Like if you picked up someone off the waivers, like a Higby, like an Irv Smith, you would rather wait on Bellinger when those I don't two, think Kittle will play. Those two are fine. Yes, Everett. Yeah. I would certainly play I mean, those. He, here's three, what right? I'm. Here's some additional information. Kyle Shanahan said he's optimistic Kittle's going to play. Okay. So, um, he represents a lot of upside for your team, and so I guess you have to make that judgment call. 
There's uh, always the chance that he does play, and then we, he goes out for a run, and he goes, ah, my yeah, groin. Yeah, that's true. That's true, but I, I do know that there has been a um, a little bit of a frightening pass of, of trusting Higby. Like, if, you can't look straight at him. You got to kind of look to the side, and Higby will perform. But once you look straight at him, and you count on him, and maybe you make him a my guy or something, it doesn't work out. <laughs> Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, not at practice Thursday morning. So that's right here, right now, not at practice. Rut row. It doesn't seem good for them. They obviously lost Mike Evans as well, and they signed Cole Beasley. The transactions say, I don't think they're so going to play. Beasles, that's not just a cold weather disease. You can get that in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, okay. you can get it anywhere. Anywhere that, uh, that you sign Cole Beasley. <laughs> All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Into the forecast we go. Fantasy forecast. All right, the Houston Texans, 0-1-1, taking on the Chicago Bears, who are 1-1. In Chicago, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Chicago minus three. The over-under is 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, you know, who's, who's scoring 40 points? Let me give you some numbers here. So the Chicago fans don't think that I'm picking on them if I say something disparaging about the offense. Chicago has six total first downs through the air through two weeks. That's a, That seems like a really good percentage of their total throws, though. That's fair. Maybe they should throw more. Um, Houston is 30th in yards per attempt. Are you uh, you thrilled to, to take this one in uh, with the old peepers? I'm thrilled to see that the over-under isn't in the 30s already because it makes it an, you know, an easy call for me of not wanting to have this game think it's going to be the barn burner for fantasy. Uh, I've actually uh, I've gone back and forth on who I like in this game. Obviously, Chicago's at home. That's where I've landed. But Chicago has looked bad. They won their first game, but that was in that kind of watery, crazy monsoon bowl, whereas the Houston Texans have looked pretty good. Am I allowed to say that, even though they're 0-1-1? No, I mean, they've looked competitive. That's what I mean. They've, yeah, yeah. But I against mean, better teams. Sure, and I, I do – I was tempted – you know, to just take Houston here, but this is so inconsequential of a game to me that I'm mm -hmm. just I'm not going to go there. They could definitely win it. Last week, Damian Pierce had 89 percent of the running back touches. We saw Chicago get eviscerated by Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. They're 21st in the league right now through two weeks, giving up 23 fantasy points a game. I think Damian Pierce is a solid flex this week. Yeah, that's fine. The running backs in this game we were just talking about, you you want either favored running backs or running backs in close games. Um, this game does not appear to be either side is not going to get out to an insurmountable lead, forcing the other team to throw the ball. We know what the Chicago Bears want to do. They want to run the ball. I love David Montgomery on the other side. It's rare that you would want a running back on both sides you know both sides of a game but th this is one of those yeah texans have given up almost 25 points a game to the running back through two weeks they've given up 32 to the wide receiver position but right now predictability on the bear side you can't really like are, would you take a shot on mooney in a, in a no flex? way okay no way i'm i i would take a shot on mooney as far as like if someone dropped him to the waivers pick him up put him on your bench to see if they open things up they can't possibly go a season throwing sub 20 times every game that's I mean it's not 1982 like it, it can't happen in 2022 so they will throw the ball more I'm fine stashing but no is that the year you were born that is the year I was born 82 yes. yeah. okay Go that on. was a great year for the world the planet well. um yeah so I mean look the the bear side is really really easy you're not going to start Justin Fields unless it's two QB and then he's fine as that second quarterback David Montgomery and log out and on the other side, I think Damian Pierce is a flex play. Brandon Cooks is always in your lineup. Log out. Exactly. We don't need to talk about this anymore. All right, moving on. The Raiders, who are 0-2 after get, that yeah. troubling beginning, taking on the 0-2 Tennessee Titans I in Tennessee. I couldn't believe, looking at this game, realizing that either the Titans or the Raiders, they will be 0-3. Like, one of those teams, both – good teams last year's AFC's number one seed this year's upgraded Raiders with Devontae Adams and Chandler Jones granted he wasn't playing um 
one of them is going to be 0 3. That's insane. And both games were close for the Raiders. Both games were not close for the Titans. I'm also kind of shocked here. I mean, this is the sentiment right now in, in Vegas. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here is Las Vegas minus two on the road. The over-under is 45 and a half. There is not confidence right now that Tennessee can get the offensive side of the football fixed. Mm -hmm. And the defensive side, it's a broken as well. 25th against it's quarterbacks. It's a broken. Yeah, I mean, 32nd against running backs, 29th against wide receivers. It's I have, I have spent two weeks saying I trust Mike Vrabel to fix it. Mm-hmm. I don't even think we had an 0-2 team make the playoffs last year. No, no. they just have a 3% chance of making it over the last 40 years. 3%. And then at 0-3? Yeah, 0-3, you're, you're basically done. Yeah, one of, these Pack teams, it in. one of these teams' season is done. These teams are playing for their season, which makes it interesting because Tennessee playing for their season at home is, is, is hard to not pick. But the more talented team is the Raiders. So it, it'll be a very interesting game. You know these, these teams are going to give it. App, not that teams, you know, don't give it everything they got every game, but when your back is against the wall, you're going to play this game like a playoff game. The Raiders blew it last week against Arizona, giving that game away at the end. Uh, it's wild. Derek Carr this week. What are we doing, Jason? Uh, we're not sitting in the car. We we're not sitting. We in. are not sitting in the car. I, 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 I realize that the defense of the Titans is um, struggling. Is struggling and. I mean, it's all relative, right? Um, I would play Derek Carr Brady. over Brady. That was the name I was going to say. Brady is kind of a forced sit situation right now. He just doesn't have any weapons <laughs> to throw the ball to. Uh, Derek Carr isn't a bad start, but I'm not viewing him. You know, when he was he was drafted as a starter in normal 12-team leagues, and I think he's been rather disappointing to start the season. It was a nice first half, a really bad second half. Devontae Adams did not get targeted enough last week, but he's always in your lineup. Oh, yeah. Josh Jacobs, 20 opportunities last week. Tennessee was number two against the run in 2021. I, You know, it's hard. you got to play Josh Jacobs right now. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Jacobs' opportunities are phenomenal. People were afraid of Zamir White and Amir Abdullah, and like in the preseason, it was like, oh, this is going to be this massive like, timeshare. It's all like Miles Sanders' situation. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Brooks, shout out to Brooks. He said he's in on Josh Jacobs before the season. He was the only one. And honestly, even though Josh Jacobs has not performed great for fantasy, like I made a trade offer last night that included getting Josh Jacobs back because I think he's undervalued right now based on how he's being used in the offense and the future games and the over-unders. Like, I, I think Josh Jacobs is going to have a, a – Solid, not spectacular rest of season for fantasy. Darren Waller, obviously, you're starting him. He's number three at the tight end position through th two weeks. Playing Arizona will do that. But, yes, he's obviously in your lineup. Derrick Henry. Come on, baby. The question for oh, everybody is, on, is there going to be a, a rising of the Yeti? He's only picked up two first downs so far on the year. Just got paid. I consider a touchdown a first down, so I'm going to say three. <laughs> okay. Um, Kyle, can you check the weather in Vermont for me? Is it snowing yet? We'll or... do a weather check. Okay, thank you. Because when there's snow in Vermont, Derrick Henry is... I was trying to figure that out. So Vermont is really key here. Yeah. Is that where Yetis live or what? Uh, that, they, are known, they are known to... Uh, Have a few? To be in Vermont, yes. Really? But uh, there's, there's a lot of correlation historically between snow in Vermont and monster... Derrick Henry games. I'm just trying to uh, scrape and claw for any hope that Derrick Henry has a monster game because uh, the Titans need him and I need him. No, that, no snow. Uh oh, that's bad news. I look. I am. I'm sitting here in our league of records, just waiting for you to send Derrick Henry my, my way. I'm very comfortable trading with you. So if you want right. to make a deal, just just call me. I've got Traylon Burks from this game. If you if you're interested in Traylon Burks for Derrick Henry. No, thank you. Uh, Burks has a 36% target per route run through two weeks. This offense has not gotten into a flow. But I think if it does, at some point, Burks is going to be super key to that. They just don't have other weapons. It has to be – this offense has to start running through Traylon Burks. He is the clear best as – far, as far as just talented athlete goes who can make plays happen by himself – that's what the, this offense needs playmakers, and they are devoid of it right now. Robert Woods not looking great. Kyle Phillips 
uh, great for for who what he is, you know, a kind of a rookie slot wide receiver type. Um, but Traylon Burks needs to get the ball more. He's been good when he's touched it, but Vrabel does not seem like he believes that Burks is ready yet. Well, he had, uh, yeah, 37% snaps, 45% snaps, five targets, six targets. So, like you said, if he's out there more, he'll get the ball more. They have got to get into a can flow you start, on offense. Can you start him? Can you try to call the shot that this is the game where he goes up to the 60 70% snap I usage? Think, I think he is a dart throw this week for sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm starting him over like the – random allotment of Kansas City wide receiver guessing game yeah, situation. That's fair. that's fair. Austin Hooper has two two weeks and two catches, so we're uh Yeah, he shouldn't even be on someone's roster after week one. All right, quick break, back with some more matchups. Speaking of Kansas City, they're two and oh and they're taking on the Colts in Indianapolis. Colts are 0-1-1. One one. In my head, they're 0-2. Well, yeah, because they did, they haven't won any games. Right. So that makes sense. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Kansas City minus 5.5 on the road. The over-under is 50.5. Would you have expected Kansas City to be more heavily favored on the road here? No, I mean, a, a road 5.5 is is a lot of respect. The fact that they were without uh, Michael Pittman last week, the, the Colts, and that really seemed to hamper the offense, I think kind of over-inflates the – like right now the, the natural view is that the Colts have been so awful, so bad that this is going to be a massacre, a bloodbath, a blowout. And I don't think that's true. Frank Reich is a good coach. Uh, they've got good lines. They need to get a couple pieces back healthy on on defense, and I don't know if they'll have it this week. But I don't expect I don't expect this to be a completely one sided dominated uh, game. Usually, like the last several years in 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 Frank Reich's tenure, they've they haven't gotten off to the strongest starts of the season. Patrick Mahomes in his career six and zero in games within a dome. Controlled environment. He's averaged 339 and two and a half passing touchdowns. The problem right now with the Chiefs for fantasy players, you don't know where those touchdowns are going outside of always starting Travis Kelsey. But beyond that, it's, you know, Juju was a disaster last week. MBS, ew. That's that's my official stance. I mean, this is one of the easiest games. There, there's a lot of question marks, but they're all very easy to answer. You don't start any of the Chiefs wide receivers unless you're trying to take a shot at a GPP or something because obviously – Somebody's going to catch one. Somebody's going to catch touchdowns, but you cannot possibly predict it, and their floors are basically zero. You don't start anyone other than Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor on the other side. So it's – And then uh, talk about Clyde, though. Yeah. Because Clyde, so, Clyde is the RB6, RB10 through the first two weeks. He's been great. I think he is a sell-high candidate right now if he's on your team because he was the running back six, the running back ten. He's gotten uh, touchdowns. Uh, so and, – and last week he had the big, like, 50-something yard run that really helped pad his uh, – a 52-yard run that helped pad his numbers. They've been – Winning games, Clyde is the clear guy that is first up, but I don't expect him to usually be a top 10 finish at the position. So you're moving him for maybe somebody – like how would you view him in a trade for Jacobs? Because you could get Jacobs plus. I, I would need to get more than Jacobs. I, I trust the Chiefs' offense uh, far more than the Raiders' offense. If I'm moving Clyde – on the back of his first two awesome weeks, part of the Kansas City Chiefs, it is to upgrade – I'm not, I'm not looking to get like a downgrade at running back plus another piece. I'm looking to upgrade my running back from Clyde to maybe a, a running back that is disappointed. You know, try to go Clyde plus for Dalvin Cook, something like that. I do think that you're right with the uh, this game maybe being closer than people are expecting right now. And they are getting Shaq Leonard back at linebacker. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think that was happening this week. That's well, great. A full news. participant on, in practice on Wednesday, so that will be – crucial for the middle of the field and it's not like they have given up a ton of fantasy production the Colts through the two struggling weeks they just haven't been able to move the ball on offense without Michael Pittman um, Jonathan Taylor didn't get enough touches last week so at home that game could be closer than we expect and they're 
they're in that same boat, right? I mean, where they're fighting for that percentage chance of making the playoffs. Now, in their division, Houston, Jacksonville, Tennessee. It is completely 100% up for grabs. I mean, right now, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars could win this division unsurprisingly at this point. Buffalo at 2-0 and taking on the 2-0 and Miami Dolphins. This should be a really fun game. DraftKings Sportsbook line. Buffalo minus six on the road against the 2-0 and Miami Dolphins. The over-under is 52 and a half points. Where's the respect for Tua? Oh, this is just massive respect for Josh Allen. I don't think there's any disrespect to the Dolphins here. This just – doesn't it remind you of when the Patriots had Randy Moss and – a great defense, and their lines uh, over the course of that season couldn't get high enough. They they just kept moving the lines wider and wider and wider, and you'd always take the Patriots, and you'd always be right because they were just so doggone dominant. And I see your face struggling. Please tell me you're considering the almost upset because I I can't fathom betting against the Bills right now. They look <sighs> otherworldly. I am. That is, I'm reading you right, though, right? Yeah. I see your face. You're struggling. You want to push well, the I'm button. Well, I'm 2-0 oh on the almost upsets, and so I'm a little bit. Yeah, you want to get it right. I get it. <sighs> no, the Buffalo Bills are going to win the game. Um, the question is more about what can you do with your – how intimidated are you for the Miami offensive pieces for fantasy football by this Buffalo defense, which is you know the top 10 against every position – they're literally giving up 6.8 points right now to the quarterback position. Yeah, I mean, I understand how dominant the Bills have been, and they did that against two theoretically good teams. They smashed the Super Bowl champion Rams, uh, made their offensive line woes look like woes, um, <laughs> and, uh, and obviously they completely dismantled the, the Titans. So there, there is some worry, but f I think what you saw – from Miami last week against the Ravens should give you confidence to say, no, I, I will not shy away from this matchup. I can stream Tua in this matchup. I, I'm never sitting Tyreek or Waddle, and I'm not afraid. All right, Tyreek and Waddle are both top five wide receivers right now in terms of fantasy points per game through two weeks. Uh, just putting that to the test, Jason, Russ against San Francisco, San Francisco's favorite in that game, or Tua in this one. I'm going to go Tua. Tua or Wentz against Philly. Man, that is tough. I, I, I find myself wanting to buy into Wentz, which is just a – it's like a known mistake, right? Like, I know I'm making a mistake when I do that, but mm, I'm going to go cheese, Wentz. That cheese looks real good on that mousetrap. <laughs> exactly. Brady? No, I, I, I would go Tua over Brady. Um, This is fantasy gold, up-tempo passing matchup. Passing rate over expectation. Buffalo's number one. Miami's third. This is wonderful. I want pretty much every passing option you can you can get in this game. I have to be the only person that has Josh Allen and got those first two 40-point weeks and am 0-2 in our Dynasty League. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't feel good. Well, that feels pretty good when I have your first-round pick. Right. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I guess facing Lamar didn't help. Uh, Devin Singletary, we have not seen high value touches for the running backs within the 10 yard line. I don't like it. We saw an amazing finish to the season because of Devin Singletary last year. And here we are with every time that Zach Moss is out on the field, he is just, he's just a, a, a vacuum that sucks away fantasy points and value from the players you're playing. What he is, is a shield. He is a meat shield for the bills. He exists to keep their good players healthy. When they're up and they're doing well, they're like, send in the meat shield. We don't need to use our good players. And I think he's done admirably at that snap position. snap goblin. Yeah. The, so, you know, um, they're running him into the defense uh, or the defense is running into him, and there's there's no value there. If I was to play a running back, it would still be Devin Singletary. Um, well, I, I have to. So, yeah, I mean. I, enjoy. I'm playing him against you. Uh, I okay. Um, I feel okay about that. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Now, I mean, I want to know what this offense looks like in a game that stays competitive into the fourth quarter. It'll and look, who's out on the field. It'll look like the first two quarters where they're going to drop back and pass. Yeah, and it just it always works. 
because he can run the football. Josh yeah. Allen can. So if Gabe Davis is not active, yeah, I think Jake Kumaro. I know that's a shocking. What Jake Kumaro is worth a look. He basically filled in the Gabe Davis role um, and had fifty yards. So I, at the very least, as a, if you're desperate, um, he's available in dynasty leagues right now. So um, now, obviously, that's only if Gabe Davis is gone. Uh, but that's a name you might be surprised to hear. Okay. Uh, because we haven't said Jake Kumaro's name in a long time. No, Aaron Rodgers out there just saying, uh, that was my guy. Mike Gesicki has a pulse. I'm not starting him. Okay. Dawson Knox has been hurt. He's only... What, five for 46 through two weeks? With the foot injury, I was holding on to Dawson Knox. You want pieces of this offense, but with the foot injury, I'm more inclined to cut him to make room for a, a different tight end that you need to start. Because you can't start Dawson Knox right now until he's getting more targets. And uh, Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, I don't play either of those guys right now. Correct. You don't know who the starter is. You, you can say, oh, it's Raheem Mostert because that's who it was last week. But, I mean, it was Chase the week one. I think we're going to... Be in for a little bit of roulette. And the uh, the running backs not scoring a lot against the Bills. 11 fancy points total. Dividing that amongst Mostert and Chase, regardless of the starter. Yeah, it's it's not great. If I had to start one, I would start Chase Edmonds just because of the pass-catching assumption here in this game, but I don't want to start either. The Detroit Lions at 1-1 one and one going to Minnesota to take on the Vikings, who are 1-1. One and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Minnesota minus 7, or sorry, Minnesota minus 6, the over-under is 53. This is another game I'm really excited about for fantasy purposes. Um, all the teams in, in the NFC North are 1-1 one one right now, so uh, congrats, Lions. You're leading the division. Both rushing defenses have been putrid. Detroit is allowing the second most expected points per rush attempt. This is the panic game. Like, if Dalvin Cook does not have a monster mat uh, game at home against Detroit, yeah, that, that to me will signify almost like a Zeke style alteration where the offensive system is just not as conducive as the Zimmer system was to Dalvin cook. And that could adjust the kind of range of outcomes for him. It absolutely would decimate his value. And I think that fantasy managers who have Dalvin cook are feeling that fear. So please go right now, stop what you're doing and go trade for Dalvin cook. Go do it now. Do yourself a favor because it's not happening. He's not having a bad game. Dalvin Cook is going to wow. have a phenomenal game, and you will not be able to trade for him after his blow-up performance. Okay. I'm That'd very be, confident. Yeah, that, well, that, I look, I've, I've moved on from Dalvin in two leagues. So my, my I've done a little bit of the the inverse, right, where if I if you're right, then maybe I'm a fool. But if he struggles in this game. The value that I got for Delvin this week, it's not going to be the value you can get for him next week. Hundred percent. I mean, obviously, you know, the, when you trade Dalvin, if you're getting top dollar, then that's never going to be a bad thing. If he's good, you got paid for it. If he's bad, you you win. Um, but right now, after the bad week, I think is when you trade for him because you're not going to have to pay the. Uh, the top tier price, you know, maybe you could send Clyde Edwards a layer and a and a wide receiver to a team that is struggling and is zero two with Dalvin Cook and and snag him. Here is a wild stat on Dalvin Cook going back to the beginning of twenty twenty one. He has four rushing touchdowns on his last two hundred and seventy five rushing attempts. That is one every sixty eight carries. Mm -hmm. Before that time period, he was averaging a touchdown every nineteen carries. So you have to ask yourself, um, new pattern. Or yeah, is, or returning to the media. Well, and the the reality is the current is astronomically an outlier. Like average running backs do not have you know sixty eight point eight carries per touchdown. Um, and Dalvin Cook is far better than an average running back. Nothing on film so far this year has said Dalvin Cook looks slow or bad. He had a, he had a really good week one, um, and last week. I mean, when your quarterback in Kirk Cousins implodes the way he did, nothing on your offense is going to go well. I'm just so disappointed that this offense is not entrusted more to Dalvin. We didn't see the designed screen game last week. We didn't see him. You want to take pressure off Kirk Cousins getting backpedaled. I just think there's some mistakes on the play calling. I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried. But Jason guaranteed it right I, here, right now, that it's a huge game. 
I did. I will stand by that. Justin Jefferson, always in your lineup. Kirk Cousins, love him this week in a bounce back opportunity at home. Lions giving up the uh, third most points to fantasy quarterbacks. I think you can start Kirk Cousins this week. Absolutely. Don't be afraid. This game, to the best of my knowledge, is not on prime time. I'm a little nervous about Irv Smith. He had eight targets last week. I think you have to play him if you're in that boat where you don't have one of the big ones. Uh, so we'll hopefully see. I guess I'm nervous because I'd like to add another name to the list of, of reliable tight ends. And, you know, when I want to do that, I'm not often allowed to. Yeah, I mean, if you picked up Irv Smith, there's a reason you picked him up. You you know, you didn't have Travis Kelsey and pick up Irv Smith off the waivers, so you're playing him because you're picking him up over guys who have been disappointing. If I had – okay, what about in this game? TJ Hawkinson, Irv Smith. Well, I know your answer. Irv. I think it is, yeah. I think I would play – because I think Hawkinson has not shown the ability to do anything special on his own. Irv showed flashes of that last week. I mean, I think both are pretty similar tiered um, tight ends, but this is going to be a great oh, – this one would disappoint me so much if it was a shocking defensive battle. But the nice thing is I just don't think that the that the Detroit defense is good enough to make this a battle. I think this is going to be a fun, awesome game. Jared Goff then in play as a streaming quarterback option. Amon Ross St. Brown uh, – He's on a mission. I mean, his his comments about Diami Brown, did you see that? Oh, yeah. I mean, just another guy that got taken ahead of him in the draft, didn't see him playing in Washington. DeAndre Swift, yes, you always start DeAndre Swift. He has been so explosive. I feel like he is like Jamal Charles waiting to happen. I feel like DeAndre Swift is just a he's a, one workload away from the Jamal Charles type of experience where – any play can go to the house, can catch the football. Uh, you know, Jamal Williams is representing some problems there, I guess. Yeah, but not really. That's why it's such a good comp. J Jamal Charles was never the he, – he didn't always have to be the dude that touches the ball 300 times. Um, who was it? Thomas – Jones? Was it Thomas Jones? Was that the other running back that was there with Jamal Charles? I mean, I know Thomas Jones was with the Chiefs, yeah. Yeah, and, and he got a ton of work, and you started Jamal Charles every week because he was – so good, and I think that's a great comp for Swift. Swift already said that his ankle is feeling much better than last week where he had the limited touches. Swift's a, a smash start every week. And then I'm going to throw out Adam Thielen. I think he's going to have a, a big week this week against this Lions defense, giving up 34.5 points to opposing fantasy wideouts. We'll talk about him more later. Ooh, spicy. Baltimore, the one-in-one one Ravens. Taking on the one one Patriots in New England, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Baltimore minus two and a half. The over-under is 43 and a half. We have so many road favorites this week. I know. It was really hard. We, we do like a pick em thing around the studio, and it was really hard because I liked all the road favorites, and I keep picking them, and I'm like, I do not like picking this many road favorite teams to cover. We're in two weeks. We're two weeks into the season, and every worry about the offense – for New England has been validated. 30th in pace of play, fewest play action pass attempts in the National Football League, despite having the kind of running back weapons that should enable that with Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. They have an offensive line, the the running backs and the wide receiver and the and the quarterback to run a play action system and they're not implementing it because they have terrible coaching at the offensive level right now that's just the truth I think they have talent to be a good offense I mean last season this group was a very good offense this season year two of Mac Jones when they should be getting better they're getting worse it's because of the coaching any interest in trading for Ramondre Stevenson who had 62 percent of the snaps it did not translate into production last week but you see the capability of this offense because Damian Harris was the running back five last week so with those, you know, you talk about who's on the field. Is there a gap between the snap counts and the production? Uh, there, there is. Obviously, Damian Harris was was great last week. Had seventeen opportunities, fifteen carries, got the touchdown. Was uh, and he's healthy now. Yes, he's totally was, fine. He was not on the Wednesday practice report for the Patriots. I, I, you know, as of right now, I have a hard time um, trusting Ramondre after last year and last week where. 
we always want it to be him. We, oh, man, he can catch the ball. He's so good. He's so talented. He's young. He's unknown. He should be the guy. But then it's like it's always Damian Harris. And I'm just going to trust what's constantly been happening where Damian Harris is getting the touchdowns and having more yards and, and, and all that jazz. Now, in, in this specific matchup, the pass catching might be needed a little bit more from Ramondre. And I and I do think trading for Ramondre on the cheap is good. And we brought this up in the studio. Trading for Ramondre in Dynasty is awesome because I don't think Damian Harris is here next year. And Ramondre has the talent to be a three-down workhorse back. Are you starting any uh, Patriots? I'm starting Damian Harris. Um, I am literally starting Damian Harris against you. Uh, Jacoby Myers. Uh, so I want the injury is a bit of a concern to to put out there. Yeah, in a PPR league, uh, he was pretty much an auto start for me as a flex level player. But you've got to monitor the knee issue. I, I didn't even know about that until this morning. Kyle, can you please read off the list of teams giving up more fantasy points than the Ravens to uh, opposing wide receivers? I'm done. Well, that makes sense. Well, I mean, in two weeks, when you have Waddle and Terry Kill go f full nuclear, uh, I mean. The, the, there's no doubt who gave up the most points to wide receivers. I'll bet if you took week one out, they're still close. They also have uh, given up the most to the quarterback position thanks to Tua. So on that on that side of the ball, though, Lamar has been amazing. Uh, number one fantasy quarterback right now, Lamar Jackson. J.K. Dobbins is just, you know, the, the, the questions just keep persisting because we don't have him back out on the field. He got a full practice and full participant I expect to see him this week I will not in I will not dream of starting J.K. Dobbins until after he has proven he should be started on the road against the Patriots is not your debut for J.K. Dobbins for your fantasy team yeah I mean it the matchup is is if this was on if this was at home against Detroit I'm not starting him guessing that he's going to get enough workload to be great in a great matchup it, you wait until after he's done it then you start. Baltimore tight ends have seen 47% of their targets or of the targets on this offense. Um, Isaiah likely getting involved. Mark Andrews, obviously a dominant force. Rashad Bateman, really strong two weeks to start his uh, post-Hollywood Brown career. Yeah, he has overproduced for the amount of targets he's getting. So you worry about like, well, he, you know, the, the underlying metrics aren't as good as his fantasy finish, but it is nice to see the talent that they drafted in the first round to be talented on the field and score fantasy points. So, uh, with Lamar Jackson, he's the wide receiver one. I think you've got to start him every week, and and he won't always have good games. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully uh, he does when you start him. And I'm starting him against you, so hopefully he does this week. Yeah, that's great. Also, Jason. speaking of J.K. Dobbins, I do think that now is the time that you could maybe try to trade for J.K. Dobbins. Okay. If someone's zero and two, and they struggle. they need somebody that they know is going to start. Yeah, if you could stash him. Starts of the week momentarily. One more matchup I want to get through before the starts of the week. Cincinnati at 0-2, taking on the 1-1 Jets in New York. Another road favorite. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cincinnati minus 5. The over-under is 45. Uh, this seems like, on paper, the get-right game for the Cincinnati offense. The, you know, their run to the Super Bowl. And yet, you know, last year Cincinnati did lose to them, 34-31. Cincinnati has not been uh, efficient. On offense, They're, Burrow's taking a ton of sacks. If you want to hear us talk in depth about this Cincinnati offense, we did it yesterday on the Unsolved Mysteries episode. Mm -hmm. But there are a ton of fantasy uh, question marks. By the way, that line has moved to Cincinnati minus six and a half. So they're even heavier favorites. But, um, you know, Joe Flacco has really impressed in terms of the passing attempts, the comeback victory last week, and more so for fantasy players, the ability for him to, you know, supply value to a Garrett Wilson who was heavily targeted last week. Garrett Wilson had a really nice first two weeks. There's been quite a few of those rookie wide receivers: Drake London, Garrett Wilson, um, Jahan Dotson, Chris Olave. Yeah, all all of those players have had impressive starts. You know, they're at home in this matchup, but the Bengals' defense, it's a pretty solid defense. Yeah, their their defense is great, and I think you're – I think that there's some trap here um, in those wide receivers. Like, Garrett Wilson has – he broke out. He 
officially broke out last week when you get the amount of targets that he got and and have the fantasy finish we know he's going to be good that's a done deal what you don't know is how often and which games and the matchup here I mean two weeks ago uh, you know when the Jets were getting shut down and Joe Flacco threw it 59 times nobody had value because they were playing against a good defense and getting just completely shut down I think that the Bengals scare me far more on the defensive side. They have problems on offense, but their defense has looked absolutely fine. And I don't think the Jets are going to be able to handle the the Bengals' defense. I don't think that Joe Flacco, the statue in the pocket, is going to have a fun Sunday. I still would start Garrett Wilson. You he's a are. he's a start for me. I uh, I would rather I would rather bench Garrett Wilson this week. Okay. I just don't know how they're going to throw the ball 50 more times. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm going to take a shot at that. You know, it's like I get literally five times the odds of success compared to starting Darnell Mooney, starting Garrett Wilson. Oh, I mean, if, if, I mean, that's, if that's the level, I would definitely start Garrett Wilson over Darnell Mooney. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, to me, I think that Garrett Wilson is at the range where he's uh, in a flex consideration with other players that are. You know that that are more reasonable, like Curtis, Curtis Samuel. Yeah, like I would start Curtis Samuel for sure. You want to water bet that? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's water bet Curtis Samuel. Water bet. Garrett Wilson does lead the NFL with eight red zone targets so far through two weeks. What's the let's let's go into the mind of um, Jason Moore? Okay, which is currently veiled behind the uh, mm -hmm. the cool Protective. cool kid backwards cap. Mm -hmm. Where are you with Brees? 27% of snaps last week. He scored the touchdown, which was a, uh, a wide-open reception. That was his one target, I believe. It was. Um, which is great. I mean, it, you know, I still think he's going to be counted on by this team this year. Michael Carter has limits, right? Like He has, he has constraints to what he's doing. Um, so where are you with Brees's – the roster status for fantasy players – when you think he could be a flex worthy option and are you just waiting for a breakout game from him? I'm not necessarily waiting for a breakout game because I think that any play can create a breakout game for him. I mean, you know, he only had seven carries last week, turned it into 50 yards, 7.1 a carry. He's looked exactly like how we want him to look explosive. He has not gotten the utilization that you want him to get, but that was also the expectation. Like when he was on the breakouts episode, it was saying you're you're probably not going to be starting this guy the the first several weeks of the season. This is a second half of the year uh, breakout play. It, it obviously down scoring last week, but it's cool that in week two he was a running back one for fantasy. You you see the explosiveness. I would like to not start him this week um, because of the matchup. Again, everything I said against Garrett Wilson and and Joe Flacco and just the Jets offense against this Bengals defense holds true to. Um, you know, holds true to Brees Hall. So next, the following week against Pittsburgh and then Miami and Green Bay, I'm I'm in on starting Brees Hall. So maybe uh, after this week is when you try to trade for him if you didn't draft him. Mixon, Chase, Higgins, start them all? Oh, yeah, always. And Mixon. Joe Burrow bounce back? A Burrow bounce? Yeah. A Burrow bounce back? Man, please. A BBB? I hope he bounces back. Okay. All right. All the rankings, the start sit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. It's time for our starts. Starts of the week. Mr. Moore, why don't you give us your quarterback? Well, I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford this week against Arizona. Um, he was sitting on a lot of waivers after week one in Buffalo and the beat down. Uh, but this is the matchup you want to get him. Uh, last year, Arizona uh, against Arizona, he went 287 yards and three touchdowns. And so far in 2022, the Cardinals are allowing the highest expected points per pass attempt in the NFL. The Rams are three and a half point road favorites again in a game that has nearly a 50 point over under. And I think he will have another great outing against the Cardinals. Uh, I believe the Cardinals have beaten the Rams once in the last 11 games. And was Sean, on the road last year early. Correct. And Sean McVay has pretty much completely owned uh, the Arizona Cardinals outside of that one game. We will see the uh, J.J. Watt look great last week 
for yes. Arizona. So we'll see if the pass rush can get to Stafford with that offensive line concern from week one. If J.J. plays the whole game, he'll get to Stafford. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Cousins is my start of the week against Detroit. Bounce back game for Cousins at home, not in prime time. Uh, the Lions are there as a just like a friend. They come alongside Kirk and they say, hey, uh, I'm here for you because when I – you know, when we play against you, you average 280 and two has the weapons. Uh, so I'm expecting a big, big game from Kirk Cousins. He has gotten the biggest rankings bump in all my quarterbacks of anybody uh, that you can start this week. I'm very confident in him. I am very confident in Kirk Cousins. And I'll throw out Mike's start of the week, Jared Goff. He is on waivers and is a good start this week. So if you've got Brady or if you've got Justin Herbert, I was I doing it. I'm picking up J Jared Goff. You well, you're not because I picked him up to block you. He's no longer on waivers, you dummy. Also, if you're playing against uh, Justin Herbert, just in case he's not playing, go pick up uh, Jared Goff. Sorry about that, Andy. Um, <laughs> my running back start of the week that didn't feel good. Justin's did it? gonna play, and then you're gonna have Jared Goff on your bench, and I everything's gonna be fine. I dropped Devin Duvernay for him. I'm fine with that. Um. All right, so at running back, I'm going with David Montgomery. Uh, he is obviously uh, in the rare position of being favored, and that's great. They, we know they want to run the ball. He looked awesome. The Texans are allowing the highest uh, rush success rate in the NFL. Opposing running backs right now averaging 4.86 yards a carry. He was over 100 yards last year in neutral game scripts. The Bears are running the ball 70%, which is disgusting, but good for David Montgomery. All right, my running back start of the week. Let's begin it here. No Godwin, no Julio, no Evans. But they will have Leonard Fournette against a Green Bay defense that is just giving up a ton of yardage against opposing running backs. 153. All the dump truck. I forgot about that. And look, the dumps, the dumps be uh, on the way. Oh, yeah. From Tom dump, Brady. Dump off City this game. Yeah, so like I said, Packers giving up 153 a game. Uh, there is not competition. He outtouched Rashad White 26-2. to He'll be on the field the entire game. He ran around on 75% of Brady's dropbacks. I mean, Leonard Fournette could be a top three running back this week. Uh, this year? I would go so far as to say this year. I think Leonard Fournette, it, uh, the top five is completely in his range of outcomes. Um, that being said, pick up Rashad White. Not ever to start him, but just an injury. He's an injury away from He's a Sunday special. morning ad just in case something happens. Exactly. The Sunday mornings are great. And Mike's start of the week is Miles Sanders. We talked about it earlier. He's looked great. And, um, you know, Mike said he's riding, riding the uh, momentum for yeah. Miles Sanders. I get it. My uh, wide receiver start of the week is Michael Thomas. Michael I'm, Thomas? Michael Thomas. Michael Dobbins, I am in on Michael Thomas as a wide receiver to the rest of the season. He's reestablished himself as a vital part of the offense. 24% target share, 23% targets per route run, and most importantly, he's turned three red zone targets into three touchdowns. And the truth is, you know, Olave's great. They're using him to stretch the field and all that, but around the end zone, when the field shrinks, you're not going to go to the rookie when you've got a, a pro, one of the best. So... Can I ask you a Michael Thomas question? Yeah. If most people drafted him later, maybe he's a bench. He he was like a mm – -hmm. He was drafted on the bench. Correct. Would you rather have Michael Thomas or Chris Olave rest of the season? Michael Thomas. On the Thomas. bench. Okay, Michael Thomas. Yeah. Uh, my wide receiver start of the week, I'm doing it. I don't even know if we still have the drop. It's been a while. I'm going with Adam Thielen against Detroit. I don't see the drop. Uh, is a... yeah, that's too bad. Um, Adam Thielen – I think he's scoring in this game. I mean, that's what it comes down to, Detroit. Uh, it's been a struggle. The proportion going to Jefferson target-wise has been insane, but he's run the same amount of snaps, same amount of routes as Jefferson. He started to get it going in the second half of that garbage time universe, but I think this is the week for Adam Thielen. So if you are looking to have a confidence boost, I'm here to provide it for you. I'm very confident that Thielen will have a nice game this week. All righty. Uh, Mike's is DK Metcalf, which I think is this is the week to start DK Metcalf against Atlanta. And at tight end, I am going with Tyler Higby again against Arizona, stacking with Matthew Stafford through two weeks. He leads all tight ends in snap rate, 96%. He has the third most tight ends routes run, the second most tight end targets, a 23.7% targets per route run. And Arizona so far has, I mean, week one, Travis Kelsey dominated. Week two, Darren Waller dominated. He's not in the same caliber, but 
Uh, I think Tyler Higby uh, Tyler Higby's going to have a good game just like Andy said don't watch yeah and the other side don't watch as well Zach Ertz against the Rams the oh, same matchup great. they're going to need him and the Rams are quietly allowing the highest pass success rate in the National Football League um, you know Mariota almost led a comeback against this defense this game is going to be very very close and Ertz saw three end zone targets uh, drew an 18 plus percent target share and one of his big sayings, he prints it up on his shirt. He says, I won't goose you. Yeah. That's what Zach Ertz won't do. He will not go he won't come at you. No, not unless he gets injured. He will be a target machine in this game. And Mike's is uh Taysom Hill. <laughs> that Taysom is right. Hill he, tied in for the New Orleans Saints, he, one of Mike's favorite players. He said, and I quote, That's just math. That's just math. I uh, love so Taysom Hill. Love Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. He thinks he's going to have probably uh th three to five uh, red zone carries. Right. Um, Tons of targets. And is definitely the tight end to target in New Orleans. His so, words. His, his words, words, not, not mine. No. Uh, he also wanted to throw out Evan Ingram as yeah, a good start, who no. is a good start and could be on waivers. Uh, he led the team in targets last week. So uh, um, it was kind of cheating for him to have two. Just to be clear for those listening, in case sarcasm, it, it doesn't really land he for you. He loves Taysom Hill. He loves Hill. Taysom Hill. Um, when I mentioned that I would, you know, I'd be willing, because he's out today. Right, and I'm like, hey, buddy, I can mention your starts of the week. Yeah, and I mentioned that I probably mentioned Taysom Hill, and uh, to quote Mike, I will burn the studio to the ground with you in it. Yeah, so so I yeah, he loves him, loves him this week. Stay safe, Andy. Yeah. All right, uh, does that do it? Is that the that starts does, of the week? Uh, that does it for uh, the boring ones. Okay, let's move on. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. <clears throat> it's time to embark. Call me Tony Stark as I am the one who panders. I flew to Miami, put on matching jammies with a Jason, last name Sanders. So Jason Sanders, huh? Jason Sanders is my yeah. boom, boom uh, kicker of the week. If that was not clear. <laughs> boom, boom. Locked and loaded. All right. That is going to do it for today's episode. More matchups on tomorrow's, including the Wheel of Shame. Oh, I forgot. So, uh, Jason, you might have to take off the snapback tomorrow. We, I don't know what's in store, but... It's Michael, not going to be good. Let, Michael, let me know. All right. That is it for today. FootClanGiveaway.com. Win those jerseys. you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers <laughs>